Well, good evening young people and welcome along to our Youth Fellowship again this Friday evening. We trust the Lord has blessed you in the past week and we hope that the Lord will bless you even as we gather around God's Word for a few moments this evening. But we're going to begin with a word of prayer together please. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes and still our hearts even in the place of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee for this day. We pray that Thou bless us abundantly. We pray that Thou have Thy hand upon us. And Lord, we thank Thee for the Youth Fellowship today. And we pray that Thou bless each young person within the depths of their own soul. We pray for those that have trusted Thee as Lord and Saviour in times gone by. Lord, help them to grow in their most holy faith. Help them to be built up and go on with God. And Lord, we pray for those that are not yet saved. Speak to their hearts, even now. Save them, Lord. Show them that Christ died for the ungodly. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you have a copy of God's Word, I want you to turn in your Bible to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 with me, please. And we'll only spend a few moments in this verse, but I trust as we just focus on these few thoughts that the Lord will bless your heart and bless mine and that it will be a profitable time even around God's word. Colossians chapter 3, if maybe you have distractions around you, I would encourage you at this very moment to find a quiet place somewhere where you'll not be distracted. But Colossians chapter 3, we're going to begin at the verse... The verse 22 together and we'll read through to the end of the chapter. Colossians 3 verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. We trust the Lord of bless that short reading. I want to leave with you the words of the verse 23, please. The words of the verse 23 say, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. Young person, I want to ask you tonight, are you doing anything for God? Are you doing anything for God? Now maybe you say, well, well, preacher, I'm only a young person, that I'm maybe going to grow up a little before I start doing something for God. Maybe I, I want to... Uh, I finish school before I decide to do something for God. Maybe I want to get a job or qualifications before I start doing something for, jo uh, for God. No, young person, we are to do something for God every single day. Every single day. I've already told you, I think it was last week, about D.L. Moody and his covenant with God that he was going to witness to a soul every day. And even when he'd gone to bed at night, he'd get out of bed after he remembered and he'd go out into the street and he'd try and find a soul to witness to. You see, to do something every day for God, it's vital. It's vital. And God doesn't expect you, Christian young person, to wait a number of years till maybe you've got a job or maybe you're married or maybe you have children or maybe you're settled in life. Maybe you have a home or a car or... The Lord is waiting for a certain time and says, well, now that you've accomplished something, then do something for me. No, God expects you to do something and to do something now. So I want to ask you again, are you doing something for God? I want to ask you, are you doing anything for God, Christian young person? Because when we think of what Christ has done for us, is he not worthy of our time? Is he not worthy of our effort? Is he not worthy of us doing something for him, considering the fact that he shed his blood for us? Our text 
assumes right off the bat that we're already doing something. It says, and whatsoever ye do. You see, the verse doesn't even give us any wiggle room. It doesn't give us any room to do nothing. It's saying that you are going to do something, and whatsoever it is you're going to do, then the verse carries on. Do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So you find here the verse makes the assumption, straight away, Christian, that you're doing something. Now I want to ask you, are you doing something? Are you doing anything for God? Now you may say, well, preacher, what on earth can I do? Well, you have school friends that you will meet that I will never get the opportunity to preach to. You have family members, you have individuals around you, maybe maybe neighbours, maybe even people who work on the farm, I, I don't know. But you have people that surround you that I may never meet, that I may never be able to witness to, that I may never be able to preach to. And the same goes for me. I have people around me. I have people I meet. I have people I have contact with that you will never meet. You see, God has placed you, young person, if you're a Christian, among a certain group of people and you are to be an ambassador a representative of Christ. You are to be a Christian before them and do something for God. So I ask you, are you doing something for God? And that's really the first part of our, our, our verse. And whatsoever ye do, the assumptions made, you're going to be doing something. So are you? Well, we'll read on. And the verse 23 of Colossians 3 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily do it heartily what's that mean do it with the whole of your heart in other words you know my friend often when we do something especially when we're doing something in the lord's work we don't do it heartily do we we don't do it with the whole of our heart sometimes we do it begrudgingly sometimes we do it because we're told to do it Sometimes we do it because we were begged and pleaded with to do it. And someone has quite literally twisted our arm behind our back and forced us into doing it. Well, if that's the reason why you're doing it, there's no point doing it. Because the Lord expects you to do something, Christian, but he also expects you to do it heartily. Do it willingly. Do it voluntarily. Do it with all of your being. Do it with every every atom of your being give it your all christian and that means going to church that means going to sabbath school that means going to the gospel bus that means going to youth fellowship that means attending church that means speaking to friends that means giving out gospel leaflets that means doing anything and everything for god and do it with the whole of your heart no half-heartedness because the lord sees your heart and the Lord wants to say of you like he could say of David that that is a man or that is a woman or that is a young person after my own heart. That is somebody that has a heart like the heart of God and they're doing a work for God and they're doing it heartily. Is that you? Are you doing it heartily? But then we find another segment in our verse and it says, and whatsoever ye do, so are you doing anything yet, Christian? And then it goes on, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. So are you doing what you're doing with a whole heart for the Lord? But then we read the third segment of the verse, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. You see, my friend, the Lord is worthy of you doing something for him. Consider with me, not only Christian young person, but also young person that may not be saved tonight. Consider with me what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ came down to this earth. Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. He didn't sin once. We sin all the time, but he didn't sin once. He didn't think a wrong thought, he didn't say a wrong word, he didn't do a wrong thing, he didn't, he, he didn't sin at all. He's sinless, he is impeccable, he could not sin. And then he died. And did he die for his own sins? Well no, we've already established he had no sins to die for. 
He didn't die for his own sins. He died to pay the price for my sin and for your sin. He died for the ungodly. Romans 5 verse 8 says, He died for us. He died for you and he died for me. And if the altogether lovely Son of God, the sinless Son of God, could die for you and die for me, then, then can we not live for him? Can we not do something and do something heartily? And not only do something heartily, but do something heartily as unto the Lord? I'm sure you remember that famous quote by the missionary C.T. Studd. If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to ever make for him. You see, Christ is worthy. Christ is worthy of our efforts. Christ is worthy of our time. Christ is worthy of our energies because Christ has given his all for us. Let us give our all for him. But maybe you say, well, preacher, I can't give my all for him because I haven't even trusted him yet. I, he isn't my saviour yet. I haven't trusted him yet. If that's the case, then I want to tell you and tell you very plainly, young person or older person that may be tuning in. You listen to the sound of my voice as I say this, that Christ died for you. Christ shed his blood for you. And today, you don't need to suffer the punishment in hell for all eternity because of your sin. You can be saved. Right now, as I bring this broadcast into your home, you can be saved. And what do you have to do? Do you have to go to church? Do you have to be a good person? Do you have to do this thing and that thing and give to charity? No. What you have to do is turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. Repent and believe the gospel. Turn from your sin. That's what the word repent means. Turn around. Reject it, forsake it, turn from it. Forsake your sin and follow Christ. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? And when you're saved, then the expectation is that whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord but then there's one more portion in our text. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. That's a very important part of the verse, you know. Because oftentimes we can do things just to please people around us. Oftentimes we could give out tracts maybe to please our parents or Please those in the church. Maybe we could witness just to please other people. You know, preachers can often preach just to please the congregation. That's not why we do anything for God. We don't do anything to please me, the minister, or please the session, or please the committee, or please the membership of the church. That, that's not why you do anything. You don't learn your catechisms or, or, or anything else, memory verses for your Sunday school teachers or your gospel bus workers. You, you, you don't learn anything as unto men. That's not the purpose of it. And if that's the reason why you're doing it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You do it as unto the Lord. You see, because men and women will let you down. Friends will let you down. Colleagues will let you down. Even parents will let you down. But listen to me. The Lord will never let you down. He is the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is the friend that is closer than hand or than feet. He is the friend that has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He is a friend like no other friend. And that's why the hymn writer says, What a friend we have in Jesus all our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. So don't do anything as unto men. Do it heartily as unto the Lord. Christian, I encourage you. 
in the week that lies before us until the next youth fellowship, do something for God this week. Do it heartily. Do it unto the Lord and not unto men. And young person, if you're not yet saved, then the best thing you can do tonight, and the best thing you can do heartily, and the best thing you can do heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men is this. You can get saved tonight. You can trust Jesus Christ tonight. Because the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So let us learn from God's word tonight. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Let's bow in a word of prayer together, please. Heavenly Father, we still ourselves in thy presence. We pray that thou speak to every heart today. Encourage the Christian and save those that are still in a lost condition right now. O oh God, bless us until we meet again. And we pray that thy word may live on, even as the preacher's voice goes silent. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.